happens if we put an ionic species in solution, for example, here we have silver or some other transition metal, we may actually observe that they form a complex with water. So in water, these can often form complexes where the water is uh, acting as a ligand around the metal. And that ligand is essentially a Lewis base and the metal is essentially a Lewis acid. So remember, a Lewis acid is deficient of electrons. It can be a lone pair acceptor and a Lewis base is a lone pair donor. So in this case, the water is acting as a Lewis base donating electrons to the Lewis acid and acting as a ligand. So the silver can become complexed. The, so these are called complexes and the silver can become complex with water. And then perhaps we may add another species such as ammonia to the solution and the silver, if it can form a stronger complex with ammonia, may be displaced, the, the water surrounding the silver, complexing with the silver, may be displaced by the ammonia because of the stronger complex. So if the formation constant for the ammonia complex is stronger than the formation complex for the water complex, then the ammonia complex will form and displace the water. Um, so if you have water in your reaction forming a complex, it's generally left out of the reaction because it's always present and expected to be there in aqueous solution. So my slides are kind of messed up here to where um, there's the wrong uh, icon uh, in the place of the arrows. OK, so these are called uh, these are called complexes, and this is the topic of complex ion equilibria. So this is another equilibrium topic where these complexes form with a some constants. So these are actually um, reversible reactions and therefore they're going to reach an equilibrium and we can represent the formation of that equilibrium with an equilibrium constant. And we set it up just in the usual way with products over reactants. So the K for these formation constants is generally very large much larger than one, as we haven't seen before with some of our other um, Ks that we've, that we've used. So most of our other Ks have been very small, but this K is actually very large, meaning that these complexes tend to uh, essentially be um, going toward products. And we have very little reactant left in solution when these complexes form. So we represent the formation of these complexes as products over reactants. Here we have our products, and here we have our reactants. Okay. So the formation constants, as you can see, for these complexes, various complexes are generally very large. They're on the order of something much larger than one. So we here, here's one of our smaller ones. We have 10 to the third. Um, here we have 10 to the 29, 10 to the 25th. So these complexes form, um, and generally uh, the, the complex formation is favorable and the reaction will generally lie to the right. So we can also observe that an ionic species may even become more soluble than expected if a complex forms. So in the presence of water, these aqueous ligands actually form and it increases the solubility of species that form these complexes in water relative to species that don't form the complex. So for example, if you have silver chloride in water, the KSP for that system is 1.77 times 10 to the minus 10. So that salt is not very soluble in water. But if you add ammonia such that the silver can actually form a complex uh, in solution, then we get these ammonia ligands, which are complex with the silver. And the Kf for that uh, process is 1.7 times 10 to the 7. So the formation constant of the ammonia ligand with the silver is very large. It's 1.7 times 10 to the 7. So that's actually pushing the reaction toward the right and increasing the solubility of the silver in solution. 
So which compound, when added to water, is most likely to increase the solubility of copper sulfide? So in order to answer this problem, we would have to actually look up what kind of complex forms with copper that might increase the solubility of copper in solution. So we see that copper forms a complex with cyanide, and this forms actually an off-white complex in solution. So if we add sodium cyanide to our copper sulfide solution, we get a complex that increases the solubility of copper in solution. So this can also be true for metal hydroxides that form either in acid or in base. So metal hydroxides are generally insoluble, but if we put those acids in basic or acidic solution, they are what's called amphoteric. Now we saw that water could be amphoteric, that it exists as both an acid and a base, so it has acidic and basic properties. And the same can be true for these metal hydroxides. So in water, these metal hydroxides can actually uh, if form if we have an acidic aqueous solution, then, for example, aluminum will form this complex where we have this hexahydrate, and this is going to, because the, the complex forms, it's going to drive the dissolution of the aluminum in the solution there. So in acidic solution, the aluminum forms this complex with water that's going to increase the so um, the solubility of the aluminum in water because the complex so at low pH this complex forms okay and we also see that at high pH in basic solution uh, aluminum also forms a complex it's a different complex it forms actually a hydroxide complex with water as well and that will also increase the solubility of aluminum in basic solution but it, at a pH neutral solution, the aluminum precipitates out in the form of this, uh, this hydroxide that is going to um, not be soluble, and so therefore it'll precipitate out at neutral pH. So at low pH, it's more soluble. At high pH, it's more soluble, but in neutral P pH, it precipitates. Okay, so... Let's go ahead and work some problems with these concepts.